We all know that DNA is a double-stranded molecule. It is stabilized by chemical interactions. Most important of these interactions is the hydrogen bonds. Also we know that adenine always pairs with thymine via two hydrogen bonds. And cytosine always pairs with guanine via three hydrogen bonds. Inside living cells, the two strands of DNA separate from each other during DNA replication. This separation disrupts the hydrogen bonds between the bases. And this task is done by proteins called helicases. In the laboratory, the hydrogen bonds of DNA double helix can be disrupted by two methods. First method is by changing pH of the DNA solution. And second method is by heating the DNA solution. Let's suppose a DNA solution is heated. As a result, hydrogen bonds are disrupted and the double-stranded DNA separates into single strands. This separation of DNA strands is known as denaturation or melting. Thus, denaturation of DNA is the loss of helical structure of DNA. As the temperature increases, the percentage of DNA denaturation also increases. This can be shown graphically, and the curve obtained is known as the melting curve of DNA. Now the question is, how to measure DNA denaturation? DNA denaturation is measured by using spectrophotometer. This is based on the fact that all nucleotide bases consist of aromatic rings. These aromatic rings absorb light in the ultraviolet range. Now nucleic acids, such as DNA, are made up of these bases. Therefore, DNA molecule will also absorb light in the UV range. All bases of DNA that is adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine have a strong absorbance at 260 nanometer. Double-stranded DNA absorbs less light at 260 nanometer as compared to single-stranded DNA. This is because base stacking interactions in DNA double helix interferes with the absorbance. So, as DNA denatures or melts, its absorbance increases. Thus, absorbance of a DNA solution is measured under particular set of conditions. And sigmoid shape curve obtained by plotting the absorbance values with increase in temperature results in the melting curve of DNA. Now this lower portion of the melting curve represents that all the DNA molecules in the given DNA solution are intact, that is, they are double-stranded. And this upper portion of the melting curve represents that all the DNA molecules have completely denatured, or, melted. So, here we can see that, as temperature increases, DNA molecule melt, and, the two strands separate. Also, as DNA becomes single-stranded, its absorbance increases. The temperature at which half of the DNA molecules are denatured is called as the melting temperature of DNA. That means, at this temperature, half of the DNA molecules present in the solution will be single-stranded, and other half will be double-stranded. Melting temperature is found at the midpoint of the melting curve. Besides denaturation, another feature of DNA double helix is that the separated complementary strands of DNA can spontaneously reassociate to form a double helix. This happens when the temperature of DNA solution is lowered below its melting temperature. This phenomenon is known as renaturation or annealing. 
At the end of this video lecture, we now understand that DNA can melt and re reversibly. In the next video lecture, we will study various factors that affect the melting temperature of DNA. We will also learn to calculate melting temperature of DNA.